Hi friends! Today I wanted to take another look at the most recent release from Pat McGrath Labs, her Bridgerton collection. I have a first impressions and overview video already up. If you want to check out the product details, swatches, and all the shades in action. From reading all of your comments on that video, I wanted to now cover similar shades within Pat McGrath's collection because I understand how someone would pass on this and my sentiments remain the same based off the packaging. I had said I wasn't crazy about it and one of our fan members, Jean's Movie Chats, definitely check out her channel, was saying that it looked like Too Faced packaging and I think that's why there was a part of me, I'm like, I can't really pinpoint why I feel this way about the packaging and you're like, what are you talking about? It's this one here. This is the Pat McGrath Labs Bridgerton collab. And I think with the bow and the pearls, there was something very like childish about it, like very Barbie about it. And it didn't align well with the typical Pat McGrath packaging that we are so used to, even with the typical black lacquer that she had for her highlighter. This overlay is okay, but again, I'm not entirely sure if she had grander plans for this collaboration. And unfortunately, with the, the recent turn of events, I'm not, I, listen, did she plan on having the whole collection blue chrome? Maybe that would have been really nice, but I know more expensive. All that to say, I like to problem solve. And with that, I wanted to now compare, again, the shades that exist in this six pan palette to other shades. For instance, someone had brought up uh, Saturn Sunset from Celestial Odyssey, and I also want to see Saturnalia from not only Celestial Divinity, but from the, and just cover the different possibilities. I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. The light was changing and I had to make adjustments and then my brain just went, my apologies. So this video is for the person who skipped on the Bridgerton collab, might have been interested in the shades and if you already have a lot of Pat McGrath or maybe you have other shades from different brands that resemble the ones that we'll cover in this video, well then please come on down, have a seat, get yourself comfortable. Again, here is the palette and the shade I wanted to cover more is Love Match. Love Match as well as Art of the Swoon. I believe our newer formulas to Pat McGrath, she usually has her big shades in her eyeshadow palette portfolio, but these are more satin in nature. So you can see there's a sheen to them and the actual pans, they're slightly raised to indicate that they are baked and of course we'll go over the other shades in here but i was saying before in my first video that you might have a similar shade to love match it might not blend or look the same on the skin because again when you're dealing with the satin formula that's baked it has a really nice skin like finish to the skin as well as a sheen that's left behind after buffing whereas the other shades that i wanted to highlight one second saturn sunset from celestial odyssey is a true matte shade it's not going to have the same finish to the skin so you see it's more flat in finish, which is fine. That's what a matte is, but there's definitely a little more uh, sheen to love match. And someone else had also brought up Saturnalia. Most recently found in the 2020 Celestial Divinity collection, but originally found in the Star Wars collaboration. It's, sorry, it's this shade here at the very top. This is a metallic formula with gold specks in there. So this takes on more of a red hue. It actually reminds me of Blitz Flame from Bronze Seduction, except Blitz Flame is a baked formula with nice shine, but this is more of a metallic. And again, I had said in my original video that Love Match is a unique shade in that I've never seen although maybe a different, a wine plum like this in Pat McGrath's color offering. So let me grab, hold on. Hold on to your love. We're back. Remember Golden Opulence? There's a shade in here that I, now that I'm looking at it, maybe not so much. It was this one here. I think it was called Lotus, Lotus Lux. Lotus Lux is more pink in nature and it takes on the same formula 
as Saturnalia, the metallic with the, the sparkles in there. So similar, I think this is more pink and you see there's definitely more wine in Love Match. But b now that we're already here, we can compare this shade. We have the Duchess Divinity, which I had already compared to Eleganza from Divine Rose 2 Mothership 8. But Moon Phase, it's kind of giving me Duchess Divinity vibes. So here is Moon Phase from Golden Opulence. That has a little more pink. And now we're going into Duchess Divinity. Duchess Divinity actually has a really nice amount of shine and it is smoother than Moon Phase. So I don't know if you can detect that, but next to Moon Phase, Duchess Divinity is giving me a little more lilac as you can see there. Now, going through my brain to make sure I don't forget anything. There was another shade someone else mentioned. I, I failed to screenshot this comment, but I agree with them that they had said Eternal Eden and Astral White from Subliminal can pretty much make a similar look that you can grab from Diamond of the First Water. So I have Eternal Eden here. I made this comparison in my first video, but wanted to bring this out again because the shade in question, Earthly Delight, is similar to Plum Regalia. Plum Regalia is found in Diamond of the First Water. They're both mattes, although I would argue that what was the name that I just said? Earthly Delight. Again, this is Plum Regalia from Diamond of the First Water. This is a true matte, but Earthly Delight is this matte moussey formula. I haven't seen this formula yet in a palette thus far. I actually like this. This is a hybrid matte to cream type of a feel, but Earthly Delight is like a lighter version of Plum Regalia, but you see similar in terms of the undertone, that cool plum shade. So I think they were right in saying how you could definitely create a, a similar feel with Eternal Eden. My observations, I think, remain the same in that when you have these baked satin shades from Diamond of the First Water, easier to layer and create that wash of color instead of looking muddy. So for instance, Temptation takes on this similar cream to matte formula that you can layer over Earthly Delight, but it's not gonna have the same effect as Art of the Swoon. Art of the Swoon, because again, it's satin, it'll have a lighter blend on top of other colors. It'll create a nice wash diffused effect, almost like a gradient. Whereas I feel when you layer these cream to matte, it's not the same effect. But what I wanted to do is dedicate this video to actually making these comparisons and putting these demos to the test. So with that intro out the way, why don't you come in a little Closer. <gasps> That's enough. Eyes are prepped. Let's start with plum regalia on this eye. Picking up the more plummy lilac matte. I forgot to mention there's a lovely embossing on this matte. So I appreciate some attention to detail here in this collaboration, but my, my feelings still remain about the, the packaging design. And I feel the same about this matte formula, I used it over the weekend and I think very easy to blend. One of the softer blending mattes from Pat, when she first introduced the mattes found in her first three palettes, those suckers packed a punch. But as she released more palettes, I definitely recognized how there was like a, a softening of these matte shades. They, they weren't as hard pressed. Building up the color here. So here we have Plum Regalia and of course my, my usual over blending. So that's how that color looks. Swipe the brush to make sure there's no color crossover. And we'll go into Earthly, Earthly. And let's go into Earthly Delight, which is the cream, it's like a moussey, type of a matte. I actually like this formula a lot. It has a little more slip than your your typical powder matte. And again, definitely over blended. What are you gonna do? So here we have Plum Regalia on this eye. 
And here we have Earthly Delight on this one. Earthly Delight, because of this cream matte hybrid, has a little more of a sheen to it. But you can see from here, they look identical. And again, I could split hairs as to which has more cooler tones or lilac tones than the other. But I do like the blend of Plum Regalia. Earthly Delight is really nice too. I don't think it has the same amount of depth that I see in Plum Regalia. Now hopping into Art of the Swoon, this satin pink shade here, what I appreciate about this texture, um, light change, excuse me, is how you can layer this and it will look like more of a wash of color versus it just overlapping. So you can bring this out as far as you like and I appreciate how it blends with Plum Regalia. It doesn't look muddy. It just looks like it's going into this pink gradient and you could pull it under here in the same manner. Whereas now with Temptation, I have to be careful because this color packs quite the punch and I'll layer it over here in the same manner. So this is going to be more like is almost like a cooler pink than Art of the Swoon. Art of the Swoon is a lot warmer and lighter in nature. So if you much prefer this type of pink, then you will prefer to use Eternal Eden anyway. Whereas again, Art of the Swoon is much softer, is a different formula altogether. Again, referring back to the swatches, here's Art of the Swoon and here is Temptation. So you can see there's a difference not only in the color, but as well as the formula and the finish. So I definitely, you know, I'm exaggerating this application. Going back to Art of the Swoon, because since it is baked, it doesn't pack the same amount of punch. But because of that, it does give you a little more control in terms of how much you apply. And for consistency's sake, let me plop plum regalia on the lid for this eye and earthly delight for this one iconic ingenue is the i would say this is more of like a, a satin shimmer found in diamond of the first water we have a lot of these shades that exist in the pat mcgrath portfolio you see here pink mystique is also found in eternal eden pink mystique definitely has a stronger pink shift Whereas Iconic Ingenue has more of like a, an icier pink shift in the color. Iconic Ingenue and Pink Mystique. So I think you can see there's a little more pink from Pink Mystique and Iconic Ingenue here on the center finger. Looks a little more icy. Now here is the fun part where we layer over Regency Blue. And I have to say, Regency Blue is one of the more, whoa, whoa, Joe almost dropped it. One of the easier astral textures that I have dealt with. It's nice to have it in a smaller pan. And I know there was a concern about the smaller pans and the cost being the same. I don't mind a smaller astral pan because there's shades that I don't use as much as like the mattes and the shimmers. So if there was a way Pat could consolidate, have it in the six pan, but all lacquer and not cardboard and plastic, I think that would be really pretty. So Regency Blue now tapped on top of Plum Regalia. I think this is a really nice step to go just so you can use uh, the shades in here. I, now I wouldn't do this combination. I just wanted to show you the the comparisons here. Although I think this could come together if there was a wing liner. Maybe I can do a little wing liner. Hmm. And on this side, we're hopping into Mothership One Subliminal with Astral White. And I'll take that now on this side. Now I don't know if it's because Regency Blue is a newer shade, but Regency Blue is giving me a little more sparkle than Astro White, but maybe because I had, I've had this palette for quite some time. So maybe it became a little uh, more dull over time, but all that to say, it's, it's similar. So again, if you had Eternal Eden and Subliminal, you can do this look with 
the plummy matte, the pink wash of color, and hop into astral white from subliminal, top it on top of earthly delight, and you have your diamond of the first water eye <laughs> look. All right, let's attempt this wing line or apply some lashes and I'll be right back. And here's a wide shot of both looks. One look we created using the diamond of the first water, six pan eyeshadow palette, and on the other, we did a combination of Eternal Eden and the astral white shade found in subliminal mothership one and as you can see even from this distance that they're very similar and i could split hairs again in terms of if regency blue is exactly like astral white and and if i were to purchase a new subliminal if astral white will have a little more shine and be on par with regency blue in terms of the dazzle effect sure but i think the point is if you want it to get a similar vibe look from shades you already have in your pat mcgrath collection you most certainly could and i'm, I'm sorry about this dot it was a mistake and i just left it there <laughs> i added earthly delight on the lower lash line for this eye and plump regalia for this one just to add a little bit of smoke on the lower lash line in order to tie everything together but i am happy that i did this demo again just to display how similar these shades are and i know people were disappointed with the repeats or they thought repeats that existed in in pat's mothership collection and her obsession with pinks you know who knows when she'll move on to another color story but in the meantime if you missed out on bridgerton if you purposely skipped it but you actually liked the looks then you could definitely make it happen now before the sun it changes completely i'm going to take this off and let's do our comparisons with love match let's kick off this demo using love match and with the same fluffy blush on the first demo i use my refer number 16 classic throwing this into the crease now i think love match packs a nice punch is a, is a lovely color but even though i have not seen the specific color in terms of color and finish in pat mcgrath's collection it's still a pink right so you can definitely recreate this feel with another color, which we'll do actually on the other eye using Saturn Sunset. Applying this now on the lid, pulling this across the lower lash line as well. I was gonna dip into this. That would have been fun. I have to say, I love the texture of these baked satins. I would really like to see more of this formula from Pat preferably in another color, yes, besides pink, because I do think it very easy to blend and very dry skin friendly as well as texture lid friendly hopping into saturn sunset from celestial odyssey this is a true matte i am being a little more cautious in terms of how much i go in with initially because this matte is a little softer than again her earlier mattes blends beautifully and this was one of my most favorite palette of 2021. Every color in here performs lovely and they're very easy to combine and layer. So there's a little more of a plumier wine from Love Match and you see that Sunset Saturn is a little more muted, but they are similar in tone, most definitely. So I think there's more of a distinct difference here between these shades versus what we saw from or rather between Plum Regalia and Eternal Eden from the Divine Rose Quad. Excuse me, Earthly Delight. So many names. Also pulling this across the lower lash line. Here we go. If you wanted, you could also layer Art of the Swoon over Love Match. I think this is a really nice way to go. It presents a beautiful gradient from that Plum Wine into that softer pink, especially if you wanted to pull it out further like we did during our first demo. And I do have on Incandescent Gold 002, the highlighter that is included in this collection over the highlighter balm. Taking Electrique, which is, I would say a little more coral leaning than Art of the Swoon, also a true matte formula, but in the same manner, that I did with this eye. I'm now whipping it along the edges of Saturn Sunset to create a similar haze effect here. Going in with Duchess Divinity, and I'll use a shader brush to get a little more precision here 
in terms of the application. I actually don't think I, I've done this yet. So this is a, a newer combination because in my first video, I layered Duchess Divinity over Plum Regalia. Just for the sake of sticking to the same palette, there isn't a shade, and of course, since we dipped out during the first demo, so you can hop into Divine Rose 2, grab Eleganza, slap it on. Should we just do that? Yeah, we should. Hold on. Eleganza. Let me plop this on right on top of Saturn Sunset, taking Iconic Ingenue from Diamond at the First Water here on the lower inner lash line. Skin Show Rose Opal here from Divine Rose 2 in the same area now on this side. There's definitely more of like a pink opalescent flip from this skin show shade versus Iconic Ingenie. And for consistency's sake, let me hop into Regency Blue from Diamond. And I have to say, the Diamond at the First Water just feel and look of things. This actual shade definitely embodies that when light hits water and it creates that just beautifully dazzling twinkle effect. I do feel Regency Blue delivers that same feel, that presentation, okay? And since Astral White is our makeshift Regency Blue shade in the same way I just did, hopping into that and placing this on this inner corner. All right, I'm gonna apply some lashes and I'll be right back. Sorry for that piece of hair that was sticking out the entire time. My apologies. Here's a wide shot of both looks for demo number two. I think you can tell that if you already have Celestial Odyssey, Subliminal, as well as, what was the other? Oh, excuse me, Divine Rose 2. Again, Saturn Sunset and Electrique, I think are fine substitutes for Love Match. While I understand they're not the same finish, Saturn Sunset being a more true matte and the actual tone of the shadow, I think a little more muted than Love Match. From afar, they're very similar. And what I actually liked most about this video is I think now we had these colors in one place, in one palette, and maybe this spurred a little creativity to say, wow, I never would have applied Astral White on top of a plum shade or on top of a, a lilac metallic or a plum wine shade. So if anything, if if I always, I always like to find the silver lining things. Despite our disappointments, despite our concerns, dis despite all of that, I think in the end, when we return to our love of makeup, our love of inspiration and creativity, we can take a situation and again, problem solve it, attack it from another angle and have something else now to focus on. Uh, me doing this demo, I never again would have thought of applying a sparkling actual shade on top of a plum mat. Now that I know I could try that with other shades from Pat's palette, I'm now more open to layering different textures, different colors, Colors, which I'm happy that I did this because I am in the process of revamping my Pat McGrath tutorials. I already completed Bronze Seduction, so that will be up soon. I think filming this pushes me also to present other combinations that I have not yet covered from previous videos. Now redoing these tutorials, I could think outside the box in regards to, again, layering other colors that I didn't think would work out, but just taking more of a risk in that respect. But more importantly, fam, I hope this video helped you. And if you were wondering about the Bridgerton collection, and if you were like me and you weren't crazy about the packaging, and you felt that these colors existed in other pat palettes. Well, in fact, in a way they do. And as you saw, I think you can create similar looks. And as you saw, you can create similar looks. You don't have to have the exact tone, the exact formula at your disposal and let your creativity fly and do your own version. Let me know down below what other palettes and colors we can combine using Diamond of the First Water as an inspiration. And yeah, See you down in the comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial. 
pop growth comparison extravaganza or monthly faves. Take care and I will see you again soon.